The men who have lived in the shadows of these icy spires for generations believe five of the grandest summits each are host to a goddess, one of five sisters, with the power to grant good luck or bad, the power to protect life or to claim it. You can believe that or not, but you mess with that mystery, mess with the mountain at your own peril. Or so it would seem when you consider the adventures of two men who will come to Minnesota to talk to folks about challenge and taking risks and setting goals, but whose real story is one of faith in each other. If your partner needs something on the mountain, you give it. And up to and including your life. And in something much larger. His reverence for the mountain and his, his spiritual tradition in that um, life is sacred. Chirin Darja Sherpa has guided climbers in the Himalayas of his native Nepal since he was 14 years old. His mom died in childbirth when he was just 12 and it was his job to support the family. He turned to the mountains wearing always this charm to protect him against avalanches. Yeah, all the time, all the time I keep it with me. And the Gifted with speed, strength, and a delightful personality, <laughs> Cheering was very successful. He took climbers to the top of Everest 10 times. People asking, oh, you submit in K2? I said, no. No, he had never been to the top of K2, not as high as Everest, but much more fierce and much less forgiving. So the goddess of K2 yeah. is like a judge. Like the judge. In 2008, Cheering joined Colorado Dr. Eric Meyer on an American climbing team attempting K2. There were teams from all over the world, climbers Cheering noticed, who did not respect the sanctity of the mountain. Cheering comes from the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. And as, as part of that, you ask permission before you set foot on the mountain. Cheering was left with a sense of uncertainty about the expedition. And the mountain, you can believe this or not, she raged. Storms. And it's gonna deteriorate even worse. Wind's gonna pick up. So we wanna get the heck out of here. Avalanches. There's no safe way to get up through here. Then suddenly, the weather cleared. When it came time to move up the mountain, he was 100% committed. Every day I pray like uh, this uh, five sister. Climbers had a very short window, four days, to get to the top. They thought working together, sharing things like rope and other equipment, would be best. When Italians take 200 meters, you don't have to bring anything. Strength in numbers and all that, they were wrong. A documentary photographer checked in with this Norwegian climber at the highest camp before the group attempted to ascend a harrowing section called the bottleneck. I feel, I feel great. Within a day, the Norwegian climber would be dead. The push through the bottleneck may have been doomed from the start. There were just too many people to get up, turn around, and get back down before dark, and there wasn't enough rope. There is so little oxygen in the air here, the body fails, the brain too. Decision-making suffers. From below, the American team at the back of the line could see the peril. We're looking up, just as dawn is breaking at this incredible overhanging serac, which is basically a, a series of ice towers, boxcar-sized pieces of ice ready to come tumbling down. They backed off decided not to try for the summit. It was incredibly difficult. All except Shearing, who went on. Because the uh, only one widow, the only one child. What's happening? We heard screams. Searing, this is Eric Camp 4. Uh, do you know if there has been an accident? Over. One man fell to his death, jostling in line on the bottleneck. Uh, we can see a, uh, a lone figure down in the rocks. Another Release the rope. died trying to recover the first man's body. Cheering and 17 others made it to the top. Celebrated. Then began a dangerous descent in the dark. And then the mountain just unleashed. We got a call from Searing about 10 p.m. saying there was a 
It's been a huge collapse of ice. It swept away climbers, tore out the fixed safety ropes. Shearing had to go down the steepest part of the mountain by himself with just an ice axe. This is a reenactment produced by the Explorers Club, which honored Shearing. I'm very scared. Only a vision, a kind of dream of his wife crying for him, of his entire family appearing before him, gave him the courage to get up. I walk, walk. I fell down in the 50 meters. He caught himself with his axe, eventually came across a guide from another team, stranded without any rope or an axe. Another climber had already passed him by, left him to die. And I look, his face is a very nice face, very a smile. A very inside is a, how to call, uh, very, my heart is very, I cannot leave this guy in there. And Turing I strapped the man named Fasan to his own safety harness. Either we both make it back to our families or we both die together. Dodging repeated ice falls and falls of their own. This quake is so fast. And I say, oh, God, now I'm thinking I don't cry. And Pasang say, oh, OK. And I told Pasang, 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 I look like this, Pasang. Yes, he said, oh, we are still alive. It was an incredible act of heroism, very selfless. Below the summit, Dr. Meyer tended to survivors. Hopefully we'll keep all their digits. Blood is thickened, yeah, right, and your right. oxygen is low. Right. Um, you're sure to face frostbite, which... The victim's already there. 11 of the 19 who actually attempted the summit died. Cheering and the man he carried were among the survivors. Do you think in some way the mountain looked kindly on Shiri? Well, that's a tough question. Um, we're from different spiritual traditions. I think that Searing uh, approaches the mountains and the mount mountaineering with a reverence and a kindness towards other people that I think has come back to him and keeps coming back to him. Shiring doesn't plan to climb K2 again, too scary, he says. If you'd like to meet these climbers in Minneapolis later this month or see the world premiere of the entire documentary, we'll tell you how at myfox9.com. I'm Trish Van Pilsom for Fox 9 News.